शुक्लांबरधरम विष्णु शशिवर्ण चतुर्भुज प्रसन्नवदन ध्यात सर्वोपशात सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभ क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा दौर्भेरुक्ता चतुर्भ्य स्फटिक मणिमयी अक्षमा दधा हस्ते नैक पद्मी च शुक पुस्तक छापरेण भाषा कुंदेन्दुशंक स्फटिक मणिभा मसमा सामेवाग्देवेय निवसत वदने सर्वदा सुप्रसन्ना पूजत राम रामेति मधुरम मधुराक्षर आरुह्य कविता शाखा वंदे वाकिकोखिल वाकर्मुनिंह से कविता वनचारिण शृण्वन्नाम कथा कोनयादिपरा गति यिबंस तम राम चरितामृत सागर अतृप्तस्त मुनि वंदे प्राचेत समकलमश गोष्पदी वाराशि मशकी राक्षसमण महामलात्न वंदे नीलात्मज यघुनाथ कीर्तन त्र त्रतमस्तकांजलि बाष्पवारी पिपूर्णलोचन मारुति नमत राक्षसातक वैदेही सहित सुरद्रुमतले हईमे महामंटपी मध्ये पुष्पकमासने मणि मये वीरासने सुस्थित अग्रे वाच यदि प्रभंजन सुते तत्व मुनिभ्य परम व्याख्या भरतादिभि परवृत राम भजे श्यामल नमोस्तु राय स लक्ष्मणा देव्यई चनकात्मज नमोस्तु रुद्रेन्द्रय मनिभ्यो नमोस्तु चंद्राक मरुद्गणेभ्य ओके सो नमस्ते एवरीवन हरिओं लेट स्टार्ट सो लास्ट टाइम वेर वी वॉट एट वॉट वी हैड स्टॉप वॉज रामा लीव्स फॉर श्रृंगबेरपुरा सो दिस वॉज द लास्ट वर्स इफ यू रिमेंबर वेन एन रामा मीट्स हिस चाइल्डहुड फ्रेंड गुहा एंड फर्दर गुहा टेल्स दैट यू प्लीज लिव यूर ओनली इन श्रृंगवेरापुरा यू कैन लिव एज मच एज यू वॉन्ट यू नी नॉट मूव अबाउट फर्दर दैन रामा सेज दैट बींग एन एसेटिक आई हैव टू फॉलो सर्टन रूल्स इट्स नॉट दैट आई गो टू द फॉरेस्ट एंड स्टे इन द सेम प्लेस फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम आई हैव टू कीप मूविंग अबाउट यूर इन देयर अल्टीमेटली माई पर्पज ऑफ कमिंग टू द फॉरेस्ट इज टू मीट मेनी लर्न एट सेजेस मेनी लर्न एट पीपल एंड सो ऑन सो देर फोर जस्ट एज अ पर्सन इन द फॉरेस्ट लाइक अ ट्रैवलर आई एम गोन टू गो अबाउट यूर इन देयर But the least that you can do is Ashwana Khadane Naram Marthi Na Ne Na Ke Na Chit Eta Vata Trabha Vata Eta Vata Trabha Vata Bhavishya Mi Supuji Ta Ha. You please ensure that you give some fodder for the horses. Nothing this this much you do that is more than enough. Now here, why Rama asked for fodder was because Sumantra had to return back to Ayodhya. So therefore, the horses had already travelled a long distance. So therefore, he ensured that the horses were given fodder so that they can. Have that, and Sumantra can return back safely to Ayodhya. Next, <coughs> Sarga fifty one Ayodhya Kanda. Lakshmana and Guha they have a conversation. They talk to each other. So basically, Guha he tells Lakshmana how much respect, how good a friend is Rama, and so on. Lakshmana also tells him what all exactly happens, what happened in Ayodhya, kai kai the Shrata, just that everything he starts discuss. Nahi Rama, Priyata Maha, Mama Asti Bhuvi Kashchana, Bravim Ye Tadham Satyam Satye Nai Vachate Shape. Guha tells again and again that for me there is none who is more dear or you can say more respectable than Rama. This Satyam Satyam meaning not once, not twice, but I always swear by this. This is the only truth. अस्य प्रसादादाशम से लोकेस्मिन सुमहद्यशः धर्मावाप्तिं च विपुलामर्थावाप्तिं च केवलम this said that by the grace of rama alone if today i am having some respect i am receiving some honor or so it is only because of the grace of rama so this shows again now if you see sometimes people we feel that we belong to so for example a very prosperous community maybe like some people say that no our ancestors were great priests 
or maybe very learned scholars you see that people who boast about this they will doom low that is they will not do anything whereas in the case of guha now this doesn't show any discrimination but why i am highlighting this is even scriptures like ramayana also show that there is no discrimination anywhere guha though he belong to the nishadas that is a tribal community but still he makes a statement and he is so humble he says that he respects that whatever i am today if i have got some got some respect or so it is only and only because of rama so this shows the humility which even great scholars also sometimes like if i do some no i only did this it's not because of anyone else very casually we tell this more than that rama he had gone he had met guha and so on rama also does not show any kind of discrimination rama is a kshatriya a great prince but still he goes he meets his childhood friend guha and that's how he accepts all whatever hospitality guha does and so on so this shows whereas again you see in our history also we have so many instances wherein we don't go and meet people maybe from the tribal community or we have this caste system and so on ramayana does not appreciate this because you have proofs here rama made friends with the monkey community with the nishadas so nobody whenever you are in danger or so or whenever you are in need we don't see which class you belong which caste you belong we don't go and ask help that way right whenever time comes in whoever comes to our help we accept that rama also very nicely he portrays this so whenever we go through the ramayana or any scripture for that matter just knowing the meaning of verses just knowing the story is one part but why certain things have been told we have to also interpret them in the right way how each and every incident tries to teach a new lesson and today whatever we are facing or you know, it becomes very easy to point out oh, so much of discrimination so much of caste system this that but then you see maybe in the middle ages that were there all this came into being and all this is again mankind man had to start all this all kinds of discrimination and then ultimately we are following of course in today's times it has still reduced but still it does exist in many places so very casually when we say that no indian scriptures only or indian culture itself portrays discrimination at least in ramayana you have the proof in front of your eyes it is not so and like this there are many many scriptures that are there so therefore you see all the discrimination that comes in it's all maybe a wrong interpretation we cannot blame anyone but then wrong way of interpreting and understanding things is where all the confusion starts in therefore or that is the reason why it is said that you must always read the original scriptures it can be anything for that matter but the original texts if you don't read that's where the problem arises because when you read the original scriptures now you know for yourself what exactly has been mentioned so there is no place for confusion right whereas you listen to someone they will tell you a different but like you have that in certain places so the rama consumes meat he used to hunt animals hunt animals has been mentioned he consumed meat has not been mentioned now why he would have hunted animals maybe there there would have been wild animals in the forest for his own safety for rama sita lakshmana safety he would have done or hunting is something which the kings had kshatriya dharma had got hunting and now the main purpose of why rama went and hunted animals also or why he killed animals in the forest was that to wild animals like boars and all because for safety whereas here you come now rama consume the mamsa of animals so today we can also consume meat rama has also consumed if rama would have consumed mamsa then why would he spend time eating fruits and roots then when he can consume meat why can't he consume even food because you see that just now when he goes in the forest you have so many places wherein it is uh, mentioned that rama consumes fruits roots and so on so like this there are many places that are there in the original ramayana sometimes some references can be there so we have to be very careful when we interpret things it's not against someone or against what has been mentioned but we have to be very careful because you will have four people come and poke over oh, how this is happening and you are worshiping such a person it's everyone's you can say now sometimes people you know just because this topic has come people who consume non veg food or maybe any kind of like drinks and so on sometimes like you see maybe few of us we don't do but we cannot go and tell that person that what you are doing is wrong right now what is the reason for this of course scientifically it has got its own uh, benefits or so you it becomes it's difficult for digestion this that ultimately for humanity purposes you have to kill another being in it so that was the main reason why it is mentioned that avoid such things that leads to diseases this that and so on but then why from where this concept started why people started consuming meat and so on if you see maybe now you consider the tribal community or maybe in earlier times now today we have proper plants you live in cities villages everything everything is readily available 
but there was a time wherein you have stone age right people did lived in forest whatever they got they used to eat they did not know that okay there this is this is there is a concept of food we should not kill someone and eat some animals and eat so whatever they got if ultimately a man is hungry he cannot control himself right hunger and thirst are something and also sleep which becomes very difficult to control so therefore whatever you get people used to consume that so we cannot again go and you know make this as a big issue and tell that no people who eat non veg are evil people or what you are doing is bad but again at the same time in today's context still if people are consuming that is again you can we cannot say that it is wrong but why some things have come in and why no in earlier times everyone consume why can't i consume why in earlier times they consume it's a different perspective altogether if you don't have anything to eat or maybe in that particular area where people live like for example the tribal community or so if they have only animals or trees or leaves around what will they do they have to end up eating that right and they got used to it and ultimately that's how they consume but the same thing you know tribal people ate i also eat. you are living in a city why should you eat then so these are all something or now then still why do people eat is maybe they have their own ancestors so from family one generation to another it keeps on passed on uh, keeps on passing and ultimately maybe we are also following the same practice today so that can be some explanations so the point is why i am telling you all this is rama did something rama it is mentioned that rama hunted animals so what he did was it true did he consume meat if he is god how can he do that so all this is where a lot of controversy comes in i am tell the like this there are many instances that come especially in the aranya kanda and ayodhya kanda when rama goes to the forest so it becomes very easy to pinpoint and tell someone wrong but the way in which we have to interpret that is important so therefore you have to always look at the original scripture only then things become clear okay so further guha he continues talking to uh, lakshmana so this shows you can say though he belonged somewhere to a nishada community or so it shows his character it shows his humility lakshmana katham da sharatam bhuma shayane sahasitaya shakya nidra maya labdhum jeevitam va sukhani va so basically when they were having a discussion guha at that uh, that time tells that Uh, they spend the night there a few time and at that time guha sees that lakshmana is always awake so he goes and so both of them are talking all this conversation is taking place at night guha also stays awake that night and at that time he asks don't you feel sleepy or you don't sleep so lakshmana says that when rama and sita when they are sleeping on the ground how can i sleep i live or how can i enjoy pleasures or so how can i even stay back in the kingdom how can i even stay awake at night this shows the character of lakshmana he can also sleep right he doesn't sleep for all the 14 years it is said that he doesn't sleep nidra devi runs away from him just because he wanted to safeguard rama and sita yo mantra tapasa labdha vividaishta parashamaih eko dasharatasya ishtah putrasya drsha lakshanah asmin pravrajite raja na chiram vartayishyati vidhava medhini nunam kshiprame va bhavishyati Now, Lakshmana, now Lakshmana's qualities. If you see, he could predict the future. In fact, later also in Ramayana, during Sita's abduction, when Sita cries out, even before Sita cries out, when uh, Sita, sorry, tells uh, Lakshmana that you go, Manicha is crying in the voice of La- Lakshma uh, Rama, you save me, save me. And even before that, when Sita sees the golden deer, she got, gets attracted towards it. At that time. when rama was about to set even then lakshmana had predicted very nicely that this will be none other than maricha this comes in the valmiki ramayana wherein he directly makes a statement that this is none other than maricha he doesn't even tell randomly that this can be some rakshasa he tells it very clearly this will be none other than maricha only he is known for such tricks therefore we should not fall in his trap but then rama at that time very nicely says that sita has not asked me anything and that was again destiny vinash kale viparita buddhi if it has to happen things do happen it happens with all of us also right things have to go the wrong way it will happen how much ever you are intelligent or how much ever we try to set a control and no okay i know what is right what is wrong still if things have to go the wrong way it does happen and then later we realize i don't know how my mind changed i don't know what i spoke but now i feel bad right we say this so this is uh, this is the same thing that happened even with rama but then the point is lakshmana was very very smart and intelligent and he never thought from his heart he always used his brains 
so this was the character of lakshmana so that's why some people do lakshmana you can say that he gets very angry also he was very practical and logical he always thought about what is right so here also he tells the same thing to guha wherein he says that this elder son favorite son that is rama he was born now if you see the king had three chief queens dasharatha had three chief queens kaushalya sumitra kai kai more 350 other queens also out of that not even a single son could be born to them this was destiny but initially he did ashwamedha sacrifice as we had seen earlier and then at that time nishashringa comes there and tells him you do even the putra kamyashti yagna you will be blessed with sons and ultimately he does even that a lot of rituals and finally then rama was born so a lot of efforts had to be put in right so then lakshmana tells guha that after putting in so much of efforts doing in so much of uh, chanting mantras this that finally rama was born and now so you see that kind of affection even now in the case of all of us also you will have that when children are born after a gap of few uh, years like uh, okay is there anyone here maybe you have children who are born after a long time after marriage or so anyone like that no one after a long time maybe 5 6 years or 10 years something like that no one okay but it does happen why i asked you this question is for those to whom children are born maybe after a gap of say 5 6 years now nowadays it becomes very casual but then uh, like if it happens that way like after a gap or so 5 years 6 years or even 10 years sometimes it happens even 20 years only they know the feeling that is there wherein now if you don't wish to have children that is another part but then why this is being told is this is very much highlighted here even in the case of dasharatha when we look at others with children we also feel i should also have children right and sometimes it does happen that you look you feel the pida that is there this has been mentioned in our scriptures and it is human mentality also wherein only people who don't have children or so are not blessed with children only they know the pida that is a feeling that is there when i don't have something only then i value that or i feel bad for it so the same thing happens it seems that with parents or with uh, couples who are married but then for a long time or so they are not blessed with children and ultimately maybe after a long time when finally they are blessed with children their joy you cannot express that right so this was the same thing that happened with dasharatha also and ultimately lakshmana so you just imagine that plight like, maybe now here there is none so maybe we cannot relate to it very well but still if you go and ask someone like maybe after 5 6 years or so or if in after a gap of 10 years if a child is born what kind of feelings they have and automatically they develop a lot of love and affection or even if you see after one child is born if the second child is born after a long time maybe after 7 8 years or so automatically the young child gets a lot of affection right no this child is born to me after a long time and so on so the point that is being told is lakshmana also stresses upon this and you also think very well that dasharatha had already grown old so many queens three chief queens still in spite of that not even a single child could be born and he was a great righteous king he had done a lot of rituals this that but still destiny did not pave in his way ultimately lakshmana feels bad he says children were born to him still now you see two of them are there in the forest two are in kekaya desha in fact when dasharatha passed away not even a single son was there nearby so this is how destiny has to play so all this lakshmana is feeling bad and he tells dasharatha and thinking of all this he says that i surely predict that the king will not live long and soon this land is going to lose its king so therefore lakshmana was very smart he could predict things atikrantam atikrantam manavapyam anoratham rajye ram manak manikshipya pitame vanashishyati he says that things have to change because what has happened in the past we cannot change that now rama has already left to the forest but my father keeps thinking about that and his desire is also unfulfilled that he wanted to make rama the next king siddhartha pitaram vrittam tasmin kale vyupasthite pretakayeshu sarveshu samskarishyanti bhumipam this prediction also he makes that now none of the sons are there now you see the plight of dasharatha four sons were there but still immediately the karma could not be done at all for dasharatha the shraddha karma and therefore that's the reason it is uh, said that how much ever after a person dies 
immediately the karma should be done sometimes you see people are sons are there abroad this and that so it takes time but then it should happen immediately on the next day also more than that the preta the body should not be kept a very scientific reason though people now keep it in eyes this and that it is like as if now when a child is born when a child is born you wait for two days now let the child be in the hospital have to make some arrangements do we do that no we wait immediately for the child to come home right so already you are, you have done arrangements and so so even in the case of death now do die death is untimely we cannot make preparations even after death takes place the process should not be delayed at all nowadays people feel very happy we keep it on ice this and that you have special boxes for that here days together sometimes even people keep on that day maximum next day some how the body should be taken because there are certain karmas that are to be done and ultimately if you do a delay in that it takes a lot of time everything gets affected because you have all the rituals that are to follow and a very scientific reason also though you keep it in ice and all still the body has started decomposing right so it is very wrong wherein it is as if our own person we are seeing in front of our eyes getting decomposed and so on so that is so uh, practically now if there is no other way then we have to wait but then still as far as possible such things should be avoided some people now they will keep it till everyone sees and so on if anyone has to see they have to come immediately so all these rules have been uh, mentioned and in the case of dasharatha it so happened that now why i am telling you this is kaushalya highlights this when later bharata returns from kk adesha now it takes about one week the king was kept there and the king was kept for one week he had put in oil or so and that's how in those times you didn't have ice so they used to put it in a certain oil with lot of medicinal herbs this and that and if you have ever seen that uh, look at the description of almiki that is there but if you have seen a serial or movie of ramayana you will see that in that you can see actually dasharatha who is floating in oil you just imagine maybe one of our near ones though the person has died he doesn't know you cannot see a person in front of your eyes like this right one entire week it seems that from ayodhya to kk desha it used to take about 7 days or so so like this but immediately the message goes about and in those times again you didn't have fast modes of transport so it used to take a lot of time on the chariot horse ride both the brothers they return back and when they are when they come here first bharata goes and goes and meets kaushalya he sees a he goes and meets kk he gets the news he goes and cries so all that is happening later bharata comes and meets kaushalya he is not able to show his face but then kaushalya at that time goes he knew that because of him kaushalya has lost her son her daughter in law both of them have gone to the forest and so on and just imagine her plight she has lost her husband also he goes and he cries and at that time kaushalya what he, she tells is now this directly is not might not be mentioned in the ramayana let's see later but then in many folk tales it is said that at that time kaushalya highlights that you know why i am crying today not because my son is banished not because my daughter in law has gone away not because i have lost my husband but because even after my husband has lost his death in spite of having four sons after doing a lot of karma or so on the last day of his life he did not have any one more than that okay somehow destiny had to play nobody was there near him still ultimately now for the last 7 days the husband is my husband is waiting for the karma to be done and none is doing that luckily you have come i am very happy now at least now you must do the karma immediately so this is what kaushalya highlights there which talks about the importance of karma that has to be done when a person passes away we cannot keep the body very nicely at our homes and tell everyone come and meet come and meet that doesn't happen that way kaushalya very nicely highlights this in the ramayana so when and listening to this kaushalya tells that now that you have come i don't have to worry about anything my husband also will get moksha you will do everything you will take care of the kingdom and i will feel like rama himself has come listening to all this bharata is not able to control himself he felt that kaushalya maybe would shout at him scold him or maybe punish him banish him from the kingdom she was a chief queen rajamata now later she becomes a rajamata but none of that happens in fact kaushalya is very happy seeing bharata listen to all this bharata has feels in his mind that why i was not born through the womb of this mother i got a birth to the womb of a mother like kai kai so this is a thought that comes in and this again highlights the character of kaushalya so you see in the ramayana apart from rama and sita there are many other uh, characters like lakshmana and kaushalya that we saw or even guha for that matter you see their character and from that also we get to learn a lot so further lakshmana says that whoever is present at that time 
and whoever performed uh, he doesn't expect bharata and chatrughna to return back and all that so he just makes a random statement he tells guha that whoever is present at that time when my father dies they will be lucky all their desires will be fulfilled because they will be doing the last rites of my father further rama says that now we have to leave from here because we are not very far guha will also tell us stay here stay here so we have to keep moving about so he asks guha you arrange a boat or so so that we can uh, cross the ganga and move ahead and sumantra is asked to return back to ayodhya sarka you have a very important words namanye brahmacharye sti svadhi deva phalodaya mardavarja vayorva api tvam chedvyasanam agatam rama had great qualities and what are those qualities was celibacy celibacy is brahmacharya ashrama wherein earlier he had studied all that not in the case now now he was a grahastha earlier brahmacharya ashrama he had learned everything he had mastered everything so brahmacharya then he was very simple he was very compassion but now he highlights this point that if grief has to come here now i am having all the qualities great brahmacharya ashrama i have followed all the rules now i have entered into grahastha ashrama i am being very compassion character is very simple all good qualities are there but if grief is also coming in i study the vedas and so on and now because of grief if i'm going to lose on everything i'm just going to think about what happened no oh, my father banished me or oh, my stepmother did this it's of no use so all this seems to be like a disadvantage no use of such virtues at all that is a very simple example to understand this verse is 10 things we do good one thing you do bad people remember the bad thing but we also do the same thing right a person tells you five good things he tells you one evil thing we remember but obviously evil thing no 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 you told that are what about the five things that i told you good nobody is focusing on that they say no no the one thing you told bad i remember that so this is human nature the same thing rama also highlights therefore he says that i will not be grieved at all of course grief is there i do think i am also human rama as a naravatara but then how i have to overpower that how i have to come out of that i have to think about the good things that i have achieved and i have to move about further sumantra so is sent back so this rama is having a conversation when sumantra so is asked to return back sumantra so tells vayam khalu hata rama ye tvaya yupavanchitah kaikeya vashamesha maha papaya dukha bhagin bhaginah he tells without you we will be under the control of kaikai ite bravannatma samam sumantra sarathistada drishtva dura gatam ramam dukkhardo rurude chiram sumantra was very close to rama and when sumantra saw that rama was preparing to go far away he could not control himself he started crying ikshvakunam tvaya tulyam suhrudam no palakshaye yatha dasharato raja maam na shoche tatha kuru Rama and Sumantra they have a conversation wherein Rama tells uh, Sumantra uh, Dasha, uh, Sumantra that you are one of the most you can say closest ministers Ashtamantris from that you are the closest minister of Dasharatha therefore and you are very friendly to the entire Ikshvakuris so do whatever that will be very pleasing and that will make the king happy and so that he doesn't continuously keep thinking about me. धार्मिकम Only if you return back, Kai Kai will be fully convinced that I am dwelling in the forest. Otherwise, if you also come along, if Sumantra also brings his chariot and so on, every way nicely, Rama, Sita, and Lakshmana are moving about in the chariot, then there is no purpose of the Vanavasa that is served. So therefore, she will feel that I am a liar, Mithya. Whereas if you go back, she will be fully convinced that these three are left alone. They are moving about, roaming about in the forest as per the boon asked by her. 
and therefore and this is not she will not point fingers only towards me but she will also believe that dasharatha is also not a liar mithyavan he will he is also not a liar he is fulfilled her bones thoroughly esha me pratav kalpo yadamba me aviyase barata rakshitam sthitam putra rajyam avapnuyat and my prime wishes as per the boons asked by my younger brother she should enjoy this kingdom ruled by bharata avashyam rakshanam karyam adrishte vijane vane agrado gachha samitre sita tvam anugachhatu further all three of them they enter the forest further and at that time rama says that lakshmana you first go then between sita will be there and i will be behind her at last so that we can protect her prashtato ham gamishyami tvam cha sitam cha palayan anyonyasye hano raksha kartavya purusharsham he says that we are entering the great dandaka forest which is known for its rakshasa so, so we have to be very very careful and ensure that we are protected next now at one point rama shows his human nature also he could not control his emotions so wherein at one point he tells rama that you please go back and take care of my mother take care of your mother kaushalya is all alone now so you please go back so at one point so this shows again and why rama's character becomes very very relatable is that just as we also how much ever you are very brave or so at one point of time even we break down right and we say no 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 i cannot do this we do change our minds immediately one point of time we become very strong we speak very nicely but time surely comes in wherein we become helpless or we break down and we feel that no things cannot happen this way so he tells so the same thing happened with rama he also tells lakshmana that you please return back to ayodhya and lakshmana is also very smart he consoles rama tells that without you both i am not going to go anywhere so no use telling me anything anathascha hi vriddhascha maya chaiva vinakritah kim karishyati kama atma kai kai vasama gatah so rama feels very bad thinking of dasharatha he says that just because of the boons as by kk dasharatha is under the control of her and what can that aged king do there was no other option he could not break his promise also idam vyasanam alokya ragnyascha mari vibhramam kama eva arta dharma myam gariya niti me matih reflecting and thinking about whatever has happened i feel that more than dharma more than wealth or anything passion passion is so so much of affection dashratha had on kai kai and when someone had asked her when she had asked the boons he had to fall in that at that time he did not think about wealth he did not think about dharma nothing so therefore that is a reason why you see that when we say kama kama is nothing but passion or desires that is basically over desires being passionate in a good way having desires now all of us have a desire to learn the ramayana this is a good desire whereas you have a desire of maybe having 10 houses or so this is going to be cause evil one house two houses fine 10 houses what you want to do with that over passion comes in or we have one wife one husband that's fine more than that you look at other people also we feel attached that is where passion has to play a role so we have to interpret it rightly so this is where at times or you already have a lot of wealth but still you look at something you find ways of making easy money immediately we get attracted toward that this is passion or this is over desires that come in. so therefore this is like vyasana or addiction wherein dasharatha also being such a great king and in spite of knowing what is right and what is wrong he also felt a prey to this so what to talk about normal common people so rama keeps thinking about all this and this is the basic reason why you have in all our scriptures like the gita ramayana and so on it is mentioned that be very very careful from passions and over desires because because of that everything can change even life can change just as it happened in the case of the ramayana उटिंग so just as so 
So though Rama was a very good character, he never laments. He ne- now this doesn't mean that Rama is feeling bad that he is banished from the kingdom. But ultimately, he is also a son, right? He is also a human being, and this is a reason why Ramayana becomes very relatable to all of us, to human beings, because we also do feel that sometimes what wrong I did, I did not do anything wrong. We don't go and tell the person directly, I did not do any wrong. We don't go and fight with anyone, but still we do feel bad, right? I didn't do anything, but still I have to suffer. And many times, every day we feel this, right? Now I am going through all this. I did not do anything bad. So the same, and this we don't discuss with anyone. We maybe think it, think ourselves, maybe to a very close person or so. We have such discussions. The same thing Rama is doing with Lakshmana. सुखी बद सबार्यश्च भरत अफके कई सुतह मुदितान को सलाने को यो भोक्षत्य दिराजवत He says Bharata is very lucky he will enjoy the, like an emperor full of happy people Sahi sarvasya rajasya mukhame kamma vishyati tate cha vayasati te mai charanya masthi te He says surely Bharata will get the kingdom because the king has become old I am also come to the forest so therefore he can rule over this kingdom now this doesn't mean that rama was jealous of the bharata also but then he feels that his brother brother bharata is very lucky and rama from inside he always knows that bharata is a person who follows dharma he is not a one who will accept the kingdom very easily but still here he just to highlight and to make the truth he just uh, you can say like he predicts saying that bharata is a very good king all the people of ayodhya will be very happy and so on but from inside always his inner mind always told that bharata is not a person who will adopt the kingdom very easily is given to him and he takes it that doesn't happen artha dharma parityajya ya kama manuvartate eva ma padyate kshipram raja dasharatho yatha further he says that one who gives up dharma artha and a life full of pleasure now here you must not feel that rama is maybe talking evil about his father dasharatha also but through this examples what he tries to tell to the world because ultimately now all of us are also reading the ramayana so from this what we can learn is when we fall in over attachment passions desires everything on a higher side and full of pleasures also if you only wish for that ultimately it is going to doom us this way just as it happened in the case of dasharatha being happy having a nice life enjoying needy fulfilling our needs comforts luxuries to a certain extent is fine but if overboard excess of anything is bad and usually what happens is when good times come in we always want more right we have money someone says no i'll give you more money automatically we get attracted so therefore this is where we have to be careful because later it might fall and this is very very relatable you have all these some something we have this concept of credit cards right why do people even take credit cards one is you get a lot of discounts also that is what is said further what happens is next thing is at this time i don't have to pay anything so we feel okay nothing goes from my pocket i'll just have to swipe the card i'm very happy now but whatever i want i can buy it immediately temporarily i'm happy but a late year later when the credit card bill comes in at that time you are shocked you open the paper right it comes through courier or so you see to open the paper and see and at that i know i did not buy this much how come the bill has come everyone is shocked right all of us we do this some are smart okay they very smartly use where should i use a credit card or some are you can say excellent people who don't use a card at all they say no only if i have i will use otherwise i don't have to buy such things but still some people they say no we get so many offers or so so many discounts therefore i use a card i'm just giving you one example and whenever i have to buy something i just swipe a card i don't feel like money goes away or the same thing happens nowadays with all these online payments also right in earlier times when we used to have the you know the method of cash or so whenever we have to give money in cash we always have a limitation right or we feel okay i don't have cash so i will not buy nowadays what happens is when we have this concept of online even though we don't have cash this is where you see that we end up spending more though we don't come to know the money going about every time the money just gets debited from our account that's the only thing that happens immediately you go you scan something you buy something you feel that money is always there but ultimately it is also going we don't realize this today but later ultimately it is going to doom if you do overboard if you go overboard same happens with the credit card also 
this time temporarily i feel that everything is going about very happily i don't have to spend anything nothing is going out from my pocket whenever i want something i can buy towards the year end the bill is going to come and that time you have to pay if not now maybe little delay happens that is only thing for which we can be happy same thing is what rama is also saying that now initially artha kama or living a life of pleasures that was very fine dashratha he felt very happy when he was living with kai kai Uh, his most favorite queen and so on and ultimately later when she asked for the two boons it brought about his own danger so we have to be very very careful of course in the case of dashratha all this was not predicted he himself did not know kai kai herself did not know that her mind will be changed so therefore we have to be very very careful in life because we never know how things change ha shamala ji want to say something no i think by mistake okay so this was a plight of dashratha नेक्स्ट रामा स्टिल ही इज कंटिन्यू एकोह्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्यामोद्
Any other reason all of you feel? Ravi Shankar ji gave a good answer. She was, they were minor. That is, they were young. They are not attained that age. No? Okay. So, this is the answer that is there. Of course, there are a few more reasons that come in that maybe that age had not come in and they themselves were young. So, therefore, and at the same time, maybe Rama also, it can be a very, you can say a practical reason also that maybe children were not born to them then. But if you see, this reason doesn't fall in track because all the four brothers, they beget children at the same time. So, you see the amount of respect that Lakshmana, Bharata and Shatrugna had wherein they felt that only after sons are born to my, our elder brother, we will also beget sons. Because in those times, you see, you had a lot of kingdoms that were being transferred and if sons were born to them also, again that issue comes in. Which son is the elder, but I already have an elder brother, so maybe his sons will be younger, my children will be elder or so. So therefore, they always maintained that to follow, uh, to not get into any kinds of confusion. Secondly, as he rightly said, they were minor. So though you can say that they married off early, they never went the family way before. Sita, if you see rightly, she was about 18 years of age and Rama is about 23-24. Now, okay, so maybe it can happen that a very good life was being led, led about. They were thinking about a very good future, but things did not pay way. Now, next 14 years, they go to the forest. There also, what happens is they never went the family way. The children were not born to them. They return back to uh, Ayodhya. Only then, after the Visheka, everything is done, then children are born to them. So, you see, in the forest also, why they did not beget children in the forest was they were leading a life of an ascetic. So, in the forest now, children are born. They themselves don't know where they will live, where can they think about children. So, you see, even the concept of family planning also was very much ideal here. And later, if you see, roughly, if you calculate now, Sita begets children roughly after the age of 35 or so, which is ideally not set for a woman. Roughly, if you see, maybe now 18 and then 18 plus 14, if you calculate 28 and 32, right? 32 and immediately after they return back also, it takes a, some time. So, roughly, you can say 33, 34, roughly, you can consider even 35. So, 35 and Rama, if you see, is almost 6 years elder to her. So, he is almost nearing 40. At this age, they become parents. So, then if you sit and argue and that too, Rama doesn't come to know that only after Lavakusha grow up, uh, then he gets this news. So, main, he was in his mid-40s, you can consider. So, if you see, so many things do happen and then if we question there saying that, no, why did Rama, Sita, they we get children so late? Ideally, it is not the right age and so on. You see that many things have come in their life before. So, they always knew what they were being, what they were doing. And secondly, now here we can also argue why things do happen is the characteristics and the lifestyle of people in the Treta Yuga were quite different. You cannot compare it to people now. In Kali Yuga, the lifespan is only 100 years. So, therefore, there is an age limit set for everything. In the Treta Yuga, it is not so. Treta Yuga, Rama ruled for about almost 11,000 years. So, obviously, everything, lifestyle, characteristics, the age that was there. Now, if 10,000 years means 40 years, nothing, right? It is just nothing. Whereas, in 100 years, okay, when 20 years, 30 years pass, about almost one-fourth of your life is gone. So, this is how comparison is done. So, when, therefore, if I am telling you this is, we should not feel that, oh, something someone is doing just because they felt something, they are following that. It is not so. And, in fact, you see characteristics like even height. Rama was almost 8 feet high. 8 feet of height. Nowadays, you see more than 6 feet. Maximum, maybe, abnormally, if someone is having a very good height, it will be 7. Not even 7, something more than 6. A very heighted person. Mostly 5, 6, that is a rough... Uh, height that is there but in those times even height was like that weight used to also be like that so therefore characteristics lifestyle everything was different so we cannot compare it to today's lifestyle and say you know how come this is happening how come late birth takes place or how come for 10 years they waited so you see whatever they did was very very practical so why are Rama's lamenting if you come about maybe if you see the time when Rama went to the forest was very very favorable or you can say maybe he wanted he had new beginnings he was about to make, become the king now so everything you can say like whenever a person is about to settle in life and at that time suddenly destiny had to play a role so therefore Rama feels very bad and he is crying further they reach Bharadwaj Ashrama Yavata Chitra Kutasya Narashinga Nyavate Kshate Kalyanani samadhatte nabhape kurute manaha. So 
year further they reach near the chitrakuta mountain and the description of chitrakuta is given that if you live live in this mount chitrakuta always the person will be will be doing good deeds will be free from sins and so on rashayastatra bahavo vihritya sharadam shatam tapasa divamarudah kapala shirasasah so it seems that this chitrakuta mountain is very very auspicious many sages and ascetics have been roaming about here and there always and it seems that they were so very engrossed in penance that they had only their skulls left they had lost all their head body so basically you can see one who is not affected by surroundings at all they were so much engrossed in uh, tapasya and so on so basically the place was very very auspicious uh, yeah further now they cross yamuna river and they proceed to chitrakuta so bharadwaja gives them instructions how you have to reach chitrakuta and so on so wherein they meet bharadwaja and then at that time he is he they tell that can you tell us a place wherein we can live in so ultimately he tells him about chitrakuta sita prays to yamuna sita also offers worship to ganga sita offers worship to yamuna this shows a worship of rivers being done that's the reason even today if you go we worship these rivers कालिंदी मध्यमायाता सीता त्वेनाम वंदत स्वस्ति देवी तरामित्वा पारयन मे पते व्रतम यक्षे त्वां गोसहस्रेण सुरा घटशतेन च स्वस्ति प्रत्यागते रामे पुरी मिक्ष्वा कोपालिता ऑन रीचिंग द मिडिल सीता सेज दैट सीता प्रेस्ड टू द गॉडेस एंड शी सेज दैट मे वी क्रॉस यू सेफली एंड सो ऑन एंड शी टेल्स दैट आफ्टर आई रिटर्न बैक फ्रॉम Uh, Vanavasa, if we return back to Ayodhya, I shall worship you with a thousand cows, goats, hashram, and sura, sura, ghatta shatee na cha, hundred pots of wine. Now why wine? Sura paanam or sura was said to be the divine drink of the gods. So therefore, that's the reason why you see even today some people will say that no, I don't drink anything. I drink only wine. So wine. Though it falls in the category of alcohol only, that should also be avoided as far as possible. But still, it is not very dreadful like other kinds of alcohol. That is it. So therefore, and sura was something which was consumed by the gods as a divine drink. You now, usually, if you see wine, it is made using uh, grapes. Is that right? Certain fruits which are not cons. Though it is addicting only, but still not very uh, powerful. So therefore, the gods also used to have. Through different fruits, is that this wine used to be made, and they used to offer it. So therefore, because it was the divine drink of the gods, Sura, that's the reason, and it was considered to be a part of nectar also. Then it came out of the Samudra Mantana. So therefore, she says that I will worship you with this. Then she further prays to the banyan tree. Nyagrodram damubagam nyavaydehi vakyam abravite namaste sto mahavriksha parayanme. पदिव्रत कौशल्या चवश्येय सौमित्र यशस्वी सीताजलि पर्यगछस्पति So here she reaches the banyan tree and she further tells her prayers also. Further the same prayer she tells for whatever we are set about that should happen nicely and so. next finally rama reaches chitrakuta he meets valmiki there so already you see rama has met valmiki this reference comes here in the chitrakuta rain he just meets valmiki and they proceed about further lakshmana builds a hut and all the three enter the hut and here is a reference where in just for your extra knowledge i'm telling it doesn't come directly in the valmiki ramayana in a certain extends in ayodhya kanda rama tells lakshmana that oh lakshmana i feel very bad when he uh, this happens later when they when they are staying at chitrakuta bharata comes and uh, it is told that you have lost your father and so on rama feels very guilty or he feels very bad he tells lakshmana that Lakshmana, you have lost your father. I have not lost my father yet. He tells us. So, does anyone know why? Why Rama tells this statement? Can you just guess? Rama tells Lakshmana that, Oh Lakshmana, 
you have lost your father i have not yet lost mine he tells us why so dasharatha has already passed away anyone can guess no okay so because lakshmana at every step was taking care of rama of sita he was building a hut he was ensuring that they were always safe just like a father does to his young son not to the grown up son initially when the son is growing so just as a father protects his son always same thing lakshmana was doing to rama so rama here appreciates and tells lakshmana that now that our father dasharatha has passed away you have only lost your father i have not yet lost mine he says uh, i think this reference comes in the kamba ramayana if i am not very wrong uh, i am not read it but i think it comes there not in the valmiki ramayana so this shows that to become a father of course a biological father is something i have also heard i have heard this ah i think this dushanta also dushanta yes uh, this he this uh, many people do tell it is not directly there in the valmiki ramayana but i think i have come across uh, in the kamba ramayana and also i think uh, dushant he also highlights this so which is very very practical when you think about this it is very very practical because a father or a mother it's not that of course the biological parents they are important but there are so many people who come in our life for so we say right you are caring like a mother or you are like a guru you are like a father figure why do we say all this is because that person has got those qualities and rama himself he appreciates lakshmana for this because lakshmana was like that so here uh, bharadwaja he does the same thing here in chitrakuta also he builds a very beautiful hut so coming back ृगपक्षिजुष्टिप्रवासिंग्रीश्चित्रकूटाउटी is full of happy uh, full of animals full of uh, places rama he feels very happy and he doesn't remember isha sorrow at all that he has been banished from ayodhya they live here very very happily next sumantra he finally reaches back ayodhya adyaiva manayam krutva vyapatra pasira ghava uttishta sukratam te stu shoke nyasya sahayata now ultimately the scene has shifted back to the kingdom of ayodhya when in kaushalya asks dashratha what have you done this now you are sitting and grieving you are a blessed one because your son has fulfilled your promise the world will always remember this then what about the grief that is there why are you grieving now there is no use right rama is not going to come back you know your son is going to fulfill your promise so therefore it is actually an injustice but then so this now why kaushalya speaks it it's, it's not that she was angry on dashratha or she wants to say that what you have done is injustice it's not that way And she is just pouring out her emotions. She too has lost her son because she had only one son. And the chief queen, eldest queen, Kaushalya. So always Kaushalya was there with Dasharatha. But now towards the end, with third queen, Kai Kai, she he fell into that trap. And ultimately now she lost her one son, uh, Dasharat Arama, who had been sent to the forest. So therefore she tells this to Dasharatha. दशरथा So therefore, but still, Kaushalya has not been able to control her emotions. She tells that you have fear of Kai Kai, or not even asking Sumantra whether Rama has come about. So, you please ask him, and so on. Sa ta to kwa ma, sa ta to kwa maharajam Kaushalya shokala dasa naranyam nipapata sho bashpa vipluta bashni. So she is also overpowering over. coming with her emotions she also collapses on the ground further sumantra finally reaches he conveys a message of rama abhimanam cha manam cha tyaktva vartasva matrushu anuraja namarya cha kai kei mambakaraya rama's message to kaushalya sumantra returns back he tells the message 
else that don't be egoistic don't have any pride abhimanam or so though you are the eldest queen chief queen treat all mothers all the 350 queens and also ensure that kai kai also remains has a got a lot of respect towards the king now why he tells this so is it's not that he has some disrespect towards kai kai but he also cared for his father and he knew that because of kai kai the king was in a very bad condition he had seen dasharatha crying for him and that's how he left the forest so therefore rama tells kaushalya that he please take care that kai kai also has good conduct good behavior towards the king kumare bharate vrittihi vartitam vyacharajavat artha jeshta hi raja ano raja dharma manusmara so rama being a kshatriya talks about the rules of raja dharma how much ever you have some enmity or you feel bad towards bharata also always treat him like a king because the respective of age or whatever it is a king is a king you should always keep this raja dharma in mind rama conveys a message to bharata अतिक्रांतवया राजा मास्मैनं व्यवरोरुदः कुमारराजे जीवत्वं तस्यैवाग्न्या प्रवर्तनात् वदर टेल दैट ही टेल्स भरता दैट रामा शुड आल्सो द किंग शुड बी ट्रीटेड दो ही इज ओल्ड और सो ही इज टर्न ओल्ड सो यू बीइंग अ प्रिंस शुड ऑलवेज फॉलो द ऑर्डर्स ऑफ द मदर <laughs> But here Rama he requests Bharata that you look upon my mother also as your own mother. Tadhiva Rama Shumukha Kritan Jalihi Sthito Bhaval Lakshmana Bahu Palita Ha Tadhiva Sita Rudati Tapasvini Nidikshate Raja Ratham Tadhiva Ma. So Rama also Rama was crying, Sita was crying with the support of Lakshmana. They were there and they bid me a very you can say very tearful farewell. That is all. So Mantra conveys all this to. Kaushalya and so on. So whoever was uh, staying there, their message he conveys conveys to them. Next, whatever happens, he tells all this that I stayed for some days with Guha. Then how Ayodhya has also changed. The people, the citizens are no longer interested. Even the animals also don't look good now, and so on. So like this, he tells all this. Sumatra, Sumantra he further he consoles Kaushalya also. Listening to all this, Kaushalya feels that I also want to go to the forest. I cannot stay without my son and so on. Sumantra assures he tells that Lakshmana is very well, taking care of Rama and Sita. They are very happy there too, so you don't have to worry. They have already met Guha. They have crossed over Ganga and so on. And now Sumantra had lived for a few days with Rama, Sita, and Lakshmana, and he tells that all, how all three of them are adjusting in the forest, how they are living. Even Sita also has adapted to forest life. So all this he tells, and he tries to console Kaushalya, and he further tells that you don't have to worry about them. They know how to live about. They have got used to. So for a few days you live somewhere, automatically we get used to that place, right? So similarly, these three also they have got used to that. You don't have to worry about anything further. Rama will create history. Na shochya aste na chatma na shochya na pijana dipaha. Idam hi charitam loke pratishta asya dishashvatam. Evidence. This verse is being evident proof. That's the reason why we are studying the Rama Ana today. So you don't have to feel bad or so because Rama is going to create history. Vidu yashokam parirashtamanasa maharshiyate pati subhya vasthitaha vanerata vanya phalashana pituho shubham pratiknyam paripalayanti te Whatever promise has been given to them they are following that and though little grief comes in just as Rama is also human being so just as Rama was throwing out his emotions like that sometimes bad times do come in but then they are enjoying what they are doing they are spending a good time in the forest more than enjoying they are fulfilling the promise and spending a good time in the forest they are making the most of the promise given to them they are living about in the forest following the rules of ascetics and so on 
कौशल्या बर्स्ट लिस्निंग टू ऑल दिस इन फैक्ट दे आर एंजॉइंग फॉरेस्ट लाइफ तथा सूतेन सुयुक्तवादिना निवार्यमाण सुतशोक कर्षिता न चेवी विरराम कूचिता प्रियेति पुत्रे तिचराघवे तिच Now those mantra was trying to console Kaushalya. Still, she feels bad. She does not stop stop crying. She keeps calling out to Rama. Further, Kaushalya, she tells all this to Dasharatha. Dasharatha. She doesn't mean all this, but then I mean emotion. Sometimes we don't know what we are speaking, right? So the same thing happens even with Kaushalya. Also, she tells all this to Dasharatha, which further increases his grief. She doesn't think about this, but she just keeps talking about that. Further. वेरी Still, it's very difficult to believe that how she is got adjusted to all this, and I'm not able to believe this. This is what see the uh, Kaushalya thinks and feels bad. Bhuktva shanam vishalakshi supadam shantvitam shubham vanyam naivaram naiva ramaharam kadam si to abhokshati. She tells that how Sita can enjoy. the forest food that is there after getting used to all kinds of delicious food and so on gatire ka patir narya dvitiya gatiratmaja tritiya nyatayo rajam chaturthi ne ha vidyate kaushalya says that there are no options in life for a woman first is her husband second is her son third are relatives there is no fourth option so whom will i go now she feels her husband is already plunged in grief she has lost her son her relatives also nobody is there to support so she tells what is the option left there is no other option left now tatratvam chaiva me nasti ramascha vanam ashritah navanam gantvam ichami sarvada nihata tvaya she tells all this to dasharatha she tells that you are my first refuge my husband you are of no use now so almost like non existent you don't know what you are doing you are also plunged in grief rama has taken second option he has gone to the forest I don't wish to go there because I cannot. I'm not able to see. I'm not. I cannot bear to see Rama, Sita, Lakshmana suffering there. And she tells that Sarvatha ani hatha toya. I don't have any relatives also who are there to support me, like Kai Kai and so on. So therefore, you have destroyed me in all ways. So she laments. She feels very bad. Again, remember, she is not against the Shrita, but in her grief, she is also ultimately a mother, a woman. She could not bear the things. In the span of one night, things have changed completely. She cannot bear to see all this, and that's what she tells. Hatam to yara jamidam sarastam hatas tatatma sahamantri bhischa hatasu putra smi hatas chapa ura suta suta chapaariya chata vaprarishta. Shivadar continues. You have destroyed the kingdom. You have destroyed your ministers. You have brought disaster. My son, and now only you, your son Bharata, and your wife Kaike. Only these two people are happy. Listening to all this, Dasharatha more he slips into depression. He feels still bad. Imam Giram Dar Una Shabda Samshita Isham Yara Japi Mumoha Dukhita Ha Tatasya Shokam Pravivesha Parthi Vaha Swadashkritam Chapi Punasta Dasmaran. He becomes senseless. He doesn't know what to do. He keeps thinking about the same things again and again. Now, here a few people will point fingers towards Kaushalya and said that was it right on her part to speak all this? Now, here there are two perspectives to this. One is okay, she should not have spoken this way when already Dasharatha is into grief, but then she is also a human being ultimately, right? So we have to think from her point of view also. To whom will she convey? Now, whenever we are sad or so, or we are very angry, we have to express ourselves, right? So usually it happens that in that grief or anger, we don't know what we are speaking, but ultimately all our emotions come out. So the same thing has happened here also with Kaushalya. So therefore we cannot comment here saying that what is right or what is wrong. Is ultimately human nature. Everyone has to express themselves. Further, Dasharatha and Kaushalya they speak to. शोको नाशयते धैर्य शोको नाशयते श्रुत शोको नाशयते सर्व नास्ति शोक सोरिपु ग्रीफ इज समथिंग विच कैन डिस्ट्रॉय एनीथिंग इट इज मेन्टली इफ यू आर नॉट स्ट्रांग एवरीथिंग इज डिस्ट्रॉय 
you have a very good physical strength you have everything but if shoka if grief or sadness sorrow comes in we are reduced to if reduced to you can say nothing right we don't have anything shakyam apatita sodam praharo ripuhastatah sodam apatita shokah susukshmo api na shakyate even if someone hits you physically that is fine but grief takes a lot of time to leave and that is something we it becomes it's almost impossible to come out of such a situation all this kaushalya and dasharatha are talking about dharma knya shruti manto pi chinna dharma arta samshaya yatayo veera mushyanti shoka sammudha chetasah and everyone is affected by grief be a great king be a great sage an ascetic or a normal person whatever it is everyone will be affected by grief now dasharatha then he remembers the story of shravan kumara whom he had killed and how he was reaping whatever he had done that was because of his past actions so he remembers all that he conveys all this to kaushalya as you sow so you reap yada charite kalyani shubham va yadi va shubham tadeva labhate bhadra karta karma jamatmanah so dashrata tells kaushalya that it is all our past karma so a man has to reap the fruits of that early and he tells the story of shravan kumara earlier had killed the boy who had gone to fetch water for his blind parents just by listening now dasharatha he was an excellent archer his ratha used to go in all the 10 directions dasharatha that's how he gets his name so he was a very great warrior and a great great archer too so at night time he had gone hunting at that time he listens uh, he hears some sound coming from a river he feels that an elephant or some animal has come to drink water but he didn't and without from a long distance without seeing who exactly it is he shoots an arrow ultimately the boy it hits the boy and he hears some human sound coming in he is afraid he goes near the boy and if the arrow is being the arrow pierces the boy very deeply but the arrow is removed ultimately the boy is going to lose his life so the boy shavan kumara before he loses his life he tells ashrata that what you are doing why you did this what you will get by killing me i am surviving because my two blind parents are there who will take care of them now so he says that the least now you do is to take this pot of water and offer them they are waiting for water that's why i had come to fetch water dashrath and saying so ultimately shravan kumara he loses his life he dies dashrath dashratha takes that pot of water goes near his parents now his parents also and you see whenever such handicapped or disabled people are there if they don't have one sense say for example if someone is blind or so their hearing power will be very great and vice versa and so on so if one sense is not there the other four senses will function you can say one more than the normal power so in case of all of us what happens is because we are blessed with everything we don't use even one thing properly our eyes are there you see something no no i cannot see anything we see it will be right in front of our eyes but we cannot see things someone tells you also ears are functioning properly still no i cannot listen we cannot hear properly so this is what happens whenever we have everything we don't value that we don't use anything properly but people who don't have one sense it seems that all their other four sense organs function properly so even the blind parents of shravan kumara when they hear a noise nearby immediately by listening to the noise they ask who is this who is this and dashratha did not tell them anything he directly offers water and when he was offering water when now usually blind people they cannot see right so they will usually touch everything they'll make out what it is then they accept just by touching and just by knowing hearing that oh shravan kumar usually if it was their son he would have spoken something right he does not speak anything and then ultimately by touching the hands of dasharatha immediately the father he knew that the father of shravan kumar knew no this is not my shravan and he says that you are not my son who are you and so on ultimately the chratha tells everything both of them they could not believe it and they say that you will also die in putra shoka the same thing also happens here that due to the sorrow you will also lose your son and die out of that gurula gavam arthana marambe karmanam phalam dosham vayo na janati nabala iti hochyate before doing anything if a person does not see the consequences or what will happen in future later it is like that such an action is considered to be childish kashchitam ravanam chitva palasham shanishinchati pushpam drishtva phale gridraha sashochati phalagame the 
if someone cuts down fruit trees now here the example of a mango tree is given instead of that you grow some palasha trees or so some other trees and you keep watering and you expect mango fruits to come out of that will it happen no you get fruit flowers not anything there so therefore what you sow only that you will reap so all this dashratha is trying to tell kaushalya through various examples avijnaya phalam yohi karmatve vanudhavati sashochet phalavela ya yatha kim shukasechakah without knowing that without knowing the fruits of the actions simply you just keep lamenting and do any action whatever you feel like is just like when you water the tree or maybe a normal flower tree or so and then you expect fruits out of that it, is, it will be useless continuously you keep knowing the action doing the action without knowing what is a fruit ultimately it is going to really be at your own loss only you will not realize it so therefore always know the consequences of all the actions that you do later जटाबारधरस्वलकलाजनवासहाजटिकोगुर्वर्थमस्वया I was trying to bring, go and give water to my parents. At that time, you have come and killed me. What harm have I done to you? Why did you do this? And because of your one arrow, it has killed all three of us. Ye ke na khalu baane na maman maar yen maar man ya bi hathe mai dwavandao nihatao vridhao mata janita chame. He not only killed me, but also my aged and blind. parents both by striking one arrow ultimately sarga 64 results in the death of dasharatha now here also if you see though the parents were blind whatever they could they have still performed the last rites of their son this again highlights the importance of performing rites now maybe they could not see what they were doing but there was a river water nearby whatever mantras or whatever they did very clearly it is mentioned that they performed the last rites of their son and now the sage curses dasharatha and both of them they lead they also die there immediately they go to swargaloka and dasharatha gradually he loses his senses and finally dies कर्स राजन क्षिप्रमेवगम्यो राघवे whatever i have done to the entire ragu family ragu kula and rama that is actually come to me now i am reaping the fruits of my previous actions and whatever rama has done that will make him worthy all the generations in future are going to remember him 
यदि मां संस्पृशे द्राम सकृद अद्यल भेतवा यमक्षय मनु प्राप्ता द्रक्षंती नहीं मानवा दशरथा ही आस्क्स विल रामा कम एंड सी मी विल रामा सिट नियर मी विल रामा कम एंड टच मी उस मंस फी आई गो टू यमलो का अ मैन कैन नॉट सी इज रिलेशंस बिकॉज़ देयर पीपल फ्रॉम एवरीवेयर हर कम इन राइट सो विल आई बी सो बेसिकली दशरथा इज प्लंज इन ग्रीफ इज जस्ट क्राइंग आउट विल रामा कम एंड मीट मी एंड सो ऑन नते मनुष्य देवास्ते ये चारु शुभ कुंडलम मुखम द्रक्षण दिरामस्य वर्षे पंचदशे पुनः He say that he say he says that when those people who see Rama's face after he returns back to Ayodhya in the fifteenth year, fourteen years complete in the fifteenth year when he returns back, such people they are not men they are equal to gods. This is a statement that the Shraddha makes. Aarakhava mahabaho ha mama yasana shana apitra priyame na ta hadya ko asika tasuta. He cries out to his son, "O Rama, where are you? O protector, where are you?" So basically, in grief, he cries out. Ha, kausanye na shishami, ha so mitre tapaswini, ha andrasham se mama mitre kai kegi kulapam sani. He cries out to everyone, "O kausalya, O so mitra, O cruel kai kegi, my enemy, every, and to every one of my race, I'm going to die today. O enemy and the destroyer of my entire race, I'm going to die today." He says this. This is the greatness of Raghuram Shah told by Kali Rasa. So just for your reference, I have mentioned here. So, Hamajan Mashudanam, Aphalo Daya Karmanam, Asamutra Kshitishanam, Ana Karatha Vatmanam, Yatha Vidhuta Krinam, Yatha Kamarchi Darthinim, Yatha Para Dadanda Nam, Yatha Kala Prabodhi Nam, Yatya Gaya Samrataanam, Satya Yamita Bhashanam, Yasha Se Vijayi Shona, Praja Yegrihamedi Nam. शैशवे व्यस्त विद्यावने विषयेशिना वार्धक मुनिवृत्ता वृत्तीना योगेनाजा रघूनामय वक्षे तनुवा विभवोसन विभवोपि सन तदुण कर्णमागत चापलाय प्रचोदि वट इज दिस फाइव वर्सेस ई थिंक रिमेबर यस्टर्डे नाइट ऑल्सो ई टोल few people i think in the purana class i told you about this right the greatness of kaliyuga kings uh, sorry the greatness of raghuvamsha kings i don't remember i guess i i just remember roughly telling something of the kings of ragukula i think uh, when we were discussing something about in the agni purana i think this reference comes in i told you that about the kings of raghuvamsha same thing has come here also so i will uh, share this these verses these are only the verses Which talks about the greatness of the kings of Raghuvamsha. Entire Raghuvamsha talks about the dynasty of Rama, and you can say the beauty or the you can say the qualities of the kings. But these four verses are very very important. I have uh, just written the meanings also. I will share that link on the group. You can go through that, which talks about the qualities of the kings of Raghuvamsha. So the same thing here has been mentioned. So what do we get to learn from the Shrutas that this? Ultimately, over passions, or you can say he didn't know what he was doing, emotions, and how he died was grace of the Lord is surely needed when we die also. Because you see, in the case of Dasharatha, he had a very sad death because of the curse that was there. He had to die this way. So therefore, if we have to die in a good way, the grace of the Lord is surely needed because. Today we are in so and so condition. Tomorrow you don't know in what condition you will be there, where you will be there, how you will die. That's the reason why we have so many untimely deaths and so on, right? So therefore we have to be very very careful. Diviva buviva mama stuva saha narakeva narakanta kaf prakamam avadhiri tashara dara vinda ucharana ote mara ne pi chinta yani. Recently, few of us we have learned the Mukunda Mala. We pray to the Lord that at the time of death I should surely remember your lotus feet. Otherwise, it's of no use. Uh, if I die in shoka, if I die in grief, it is ultimately going to affect what will happen in future. So, therefore, in Mukunda Mala, just as Kulashekara writes this, Kulashekara Alvar has written Mukunda Mala. He cries out. He says that whether whether I live in heaven, hell, or earth, or wherever I am. At the time of death, I should always think of your lotus feet. How will this happen? Only when all through your life you have thought about the feet, you have put in efforts. So at the time of death also the same thing will come. 
all through our life majorly whatever you spend your time in seems that at the time of death also the same thoughts come to your mind therefore be very careful whatever you do all through your life mostly majorly that will that only you will remember so therefore it is said that you remember the names of the lord you remember and think about the lotus feet of the lord the same thing you will remember towards the last days also कृष्ण तदीय पद पंकज पंचना अद्यमे विशत मानस राजहंस प्राण प्रयाण समये कफवाद पिवात इट इज नॉट वाद वात कफवाद पित कंठावरोदन विद स्मरण कुतस्ते ई होप एवरी वन रिमेबर्स मुकुंद माला हू एवर हेड स्लर्ट यू शुड चैंट दिस ऑलवेज स्पेशली ऑन सैटर्डे ऑल्सो मुकुंद माला शुड बी चैंटेड हू एवर इज लर्ट इट we have learned together you chanted those who don't know please learn it and chant very very auspicious text just about 40 verses or so so here why oh, kulashekara prays to krishna that at the time of my death what happens is kapha vata pitta that's the reason why you see people they cannot speak right when death comes in they, it seems that they choke all the phlegm is there why we cannot breathe our lungs get choked right so whenever you be it a very serious condition in the hospital like organ failure or suddenly some cardiac arrest whatever it is the thing that happens is the breath gets choked lungs get choked a lot of phlegm is there inside a person's body and therefore at that time kulashekara cries out that how can i remember you then when now someone is choking for life or so becomes very can we remember any we cannot remember anything forget about god then so therefore now only let this thoughts enter my mind so that unconsciously even though i am in a very bad state i have to go through all this kapha vata pitta everything because i am used to remembering your names and contemplating on your feet all through my life at that time also the same things i will remember so therefore you bless me with that now only all through my life only if your grace is there i can remember you so therefore o krishna ensure that I always remember you so that life long the same thoughts come to my mind even at the time of death A few references from the Gita also. Kavim Puranam Manushasitaram Anoraniyam Samanusmaridhyaha Sarvasya Dhataram Chintyarupam Aditya Varanam Tamasaf Parastat Prayana Kale Manasachane Na Bhaktya Yukto Yoga Bale Na Chayva Bror Madhye Prana Maavesha Samyak Satam Param Purusha Mopaiti Divyam that is now why all these verses from different references have been included is just to tell that what exactly happens at the time of death what thought process should be there dashratha because he was plunged in grief he remembers his previous actions he thinks about die, that and dies but ultimately he thinks about trauma therefore he gets moksha but still how a person should die is performing ashtanga yoga between the agnya chakra agnya chakra is a place between the eyebrows power house of energy that's when the prana has to be brought under control that's how sages and yogis they used to attain samadhi so this has been mentioned in the gita and that's how you attain to the supreme purusha that is nothing but the lord himself okay so from this let us uh, stop here time is almost up we will continue with sarga 65 next time so ultimately now dashratha is in his last days he has almost uh, passed away with this thoughts he cries out to all his people and says that i'm going to die and what how we must remember the names of the lord all through our life so that towards on our towards the end of our life on the last day also if we contemplate if we think about the lotus feet of the lord we'll always be happy happy or you can see we'll attain a good death okay so with this we will uh, stop here we'll continue next week